Well, we're parked up here at uh, Heathrow Airport. The idea is we're going to have a flight from uh, 27 left to Heathrow down to runway 20 at Southampton. So, first of all, I'm just going to set the VOR for Southampton, which is 113.35, and the ILS for the runway at Southampton, which is 11075. Flip that over to the active window, that will now pick up the ILS at Southampton when we get within about 25, 26 miles. First job is to get the engine started, so uh, for taxiing purposes I'm just going to start engines 1 and 4. So, high pressure fuel cock on, master switch on, select number 1, press the starter, and number 1 engine now firing up. Select number four, number four engine spooling, number four engine fired up. We'll start our tax run on two engines, so handbrake off. While we're taxing, I'll start two and three. I'm steering the Comet by a nose wheel steering wheel, which is just to the left hand side of the main control column. And just turning on to 27 left now. Okay. Check our system, so I'm going to give it 20 degrees flap. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Pushing the four throttles forward. Hold it on the brakes. Okay, we can go. Looking for a speed of about 145 knots. I'm trimming the elevators now with this wheel by the side of the centre console to give me a climb of about 2,000 feet a minute. The VR has picked up Southampton already. My VOR1 is pointing here to Southampton. The ADF was set for Woodley. So I'm going to aim for Woodley first of all. I'm going to climb to the height of about 6,500 feet for this flight. Um, normally we go a lot higher for a, a jet aircraft, but 6.5 uh, would suffice for us. The Comet 4 had an engineer's panel, which of course most modern aircraft today don't have. Um, it's quite an important function for the engineer. His uh, main uh, work was to look after the air conditioning, the fuel tanks, uh, each of the four engines, one, two, three and four, and the electrics to the whole aircraft itself. Before start-up he would uh, open up the fuel cocks and make fuel available to each engine. And This also enabled him to be able to transfer fuel from one wing, the port wing here, through to the centre, to the starboard wing here. Just passing the Woodley ADF beacon now, over Reading. Start throttling back. Okay, turning onto the Southampton heading now. Thirty-three miles from the runway. Going to start pulling the speed down now, so I'm putting out the air brakes. Okay, first stage flap can go down at 220 knots. Putting the 
throttle flaps under 40 degrees. Keeping an eye on the air speed, the uh, approach speed is 140 knots. We've now picked up the ILS for Southampton, 26.5 miles away. my airspeed still. Slowly coming onto the centre line. Twenty miles out we picked up the glide slope. Take off the lock height and start a slow descent, about a thousand feet a minute. Trimming the elevators to maintain a good descent. It's 12 miles out now. I have a visual on the runway. I always say the most important instrument on an approach is your airspeed indicator and constant uh, checking to see that we're not uh, losing speed. Try to maintain 140 to 150. The rudder on the Comet is a particularly large area and it's really useful in, in uh, slow speed when landing it's a great asset. Radar altimeter comes into play I can see I'm about uh, coming up 2,000 feet above ground level and at 2,000 feet I'll drop the undercarriage. That noise there is the outer marker indicating I'm about five and a half miles from the runway. Okay, I'm going to give a little bit more flap. I like to try and cross the threshold of the runway at about 130 knots if I can. Flaps back up again. Flybe announced today they've lost 6.3 million pounds this year. 
not surprised all these aircraft are there sitting around doing nothing, but uh, there you go. I think we'll just pull into stand number eight. Check, retrim it. And that's it. End of the flight to Southampton. <laughs>